It's time for another Dice Tower review with the Board Game Knights. Hello and welcome to the Board Game Nights. I'm Sam Gillespie. I'm Christoph Schrader. I'm Jessica Jones. And to coincide with the release of Season 4 of Game of Thrones, we've decided to review the board game and the card game. First of all, we'll start with the board game here, which is a 3-6 to six player game developed by Christian T. Peterson. Both of these games were released by Fantasy Flight. <laughs> Game of Thrones The Board Game is a 3-6 to six player game developed by Christian T. Peterson and released by Fantasy Flight Games. It takes about 2-3 to three hours to complete. Hmm. It is played over 10 rounds, or the game ends when someone has control over 7 castles. There are 4 phases to the game. There is the Westeros phase, the Placing Tokens phase, the Revealing Tokens phase, and then Resolving Combat or Resolving Tokens. Yeah. During the Westeros phase, players will draw one card from each of the three decks that have different things. The first deck features information about supply, which increases the size of your potential armies, or decreases them, and also has mustering, which allows you to get additional units during that phase. The second card in the Westeros phase affects the influence track. The influence track determines who has the Iron Throne, which determines turn order, the fiefdoms, which determines attacking strength and what breaks ties, and the King's Court, which what gives additional marching orders for that phase. The third deck introduces wildlings randomly attacking and also changes play that phase. After the Westeros phase, players will then take these order tokens and give orders to every single one of their armies. On the back of each of these order tokens are orders for each of your armies as they march along Westeros. Each of these orders go anything from attacking, defending, supporting, gaining money or raiding your enemies. But they're all played face down so no one knows what your true intentions are. Often people will try to form alliances for being attacked, especially early on in the game. However, as you start running out of space, everyone starts to stab each other in the back. The treachery begins when all players reveal their order tokens simultaneously, revealing their intentions. And then all of those are resolved in turn order based on the Iron Throne. Combat begins when one person's units move into another space with occupied units. Their combat strength is determined by the specific units they have. There's also the house cards, which you can use to give yourself a bonus during the combat phase or another special ability. Whoever has the highest combat strength after the house card is revealed is the victor. Ties are broken by who has a higher rank on the fiefdom's track. The fiefdom's track's highest bidder also gets plus one for one combat during that phase. There's also the additional bonus that if you do enter combat and lose, you simply retreat your units. This means that your units don't suddenly vanish, and so it's good keeping them. And combat is far less riskier as a result. Yeah. So that's roughly how to play a Game of Thrones. There's a lot more subtle details about boat movements and transports and ports and things like that. That's all in the rules, but the primary mechanic of this game is that hidden movement aspect of it all. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really cool, is that everyone places these tokens down, you have no idea what's what's happening, and you talk to other players and you try and tell them, please don't attack me, I'll attack this other... other Attack this other person who yes. got a bird in to help us. Uh, this is Bird review. Snow, by the way. Bird yes. Snow. He knows nothing. John he knows Snow. Nothing. Um, so you you got to create these alliances which flow and change as the game moves on. It's it's actually quite a nice little idea. Mm, it is. Mm, yeah. I, I don't know. It's it was a it was a long game. Yes. It was a very long game. Yes. And I I think that didn't help it particularly. I I like the fact that you end up building alliances and you end up breaking them at the same time. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, it's very thematic in But that then I can also find myself attacking that one person for the rest of the game because I know I'm not going to win, so I may mm, as certainly. well punish them for the fact that they attacked me early on. Certainly. So, yeah. yeah. And then you end up in this little thing where you're just like constantly attacking them because they attack you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, in, <laughs> you know. In, in my first playthrough, I played as House Lannister, mm -hmm. and House Lannister starts over here in Lannister Port. And you'll notice right next to them is, yeah, it's the, Greyjoy. the Greyjoys, which yeah. have some very powerful house cards. Oh, I, I, actually, this is one of my biggest concerns about the game, is that the Lannisters start about two turns away from being attacked by the T uh, Tyrells down south, two turns from being attacked by the Baratheons, one turn from being attacked by the Greyjoy, and three turns by being attacked by Stark. Which means they get pummeled very early on, so they have to sit back and turtle by building lots of forces early on in the game to try and stay in the game, and if a couple of people attack them at the same time, that's it, they're kind so, of done. To be fair, yeah. they do have the ability to amass a large army with their resources early on. Oh, so. they, do, they have a large amount of supply, but that really doesn't do all that much to balance the game in my opinion. And totally isn't very good for the game, because no. if you turtle and you don't attack anyone, you really just <laughs> full, get Full stuck. disclosure, I got wiped off the board. Yes, <laughs> it does happen, and I've, I've very rarely seen Lannisters do well in this game. Yeah, agreed. 
Um, mm. You know, because you, there's this very fantastic castle that's easy to take if you're the Greyjoys, and you, you, you're not going to just be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Or they might come up and try attack Stark. You need to really try and get everyone else to attack each other if you want to survive as Lannister, which... Yeah, which you can do which you if can you do, could, but, yeah. but you've got to be playing with the right people and know how to manipulate exactly. them, basically. Um, another issue is that those house guards, everyone has unique house guards relating to individual characters in the series, mm -hmm. and some of them have really cool abilities, but some of them are just so powerful. But there's, I actually like that, because that means means that most of the time if someone was playing all of their really good hero cards early on, house cards early on, yeah. that that means you know they're going to have five or six that are really bad coming up, so they'll That's be vulnerable true. in a way. That being said, there is there are some that are just ridiculous. Like, for instance, there's a Balon Greyjoy. Balon Greyjoy, yes. Balon sir. Greyjoy yeah. is you win the combat. You can have one soldier march against an absolutely massive army, you play Balon Greyjoy, it doesn't yeah. matter what house card they play, it doesn't matter anything. You win the combat. On it's the other hand, if you're going to be doing winning the combat, the other person doesn't lose all of their units, mm. which is well, you know yeah. they, they just move it to the next one. It's like well, then that person has only one soldier sitting in a spot with this massive army that's going to be <laughs> next to it, and it's like what's the first thing they're going to do? They well, do yeah. get Humble routed, them. which means they cannot participate in any more battles until the next phase. That's yeah, true. so they yeah. are vulnerable yeah. after being pushed back like that. Yeah, because yeah. they can be destroyed. Yes, yeah. if, if they have to be r uh, routed again, they die. If someone yeah. were to make an alliance and say the Lannisters are going to exhaust and make these guys retreat and someone else from behind is going to come in and wipe them out during the yeah. next attack. Uh, another thing is there's this supply which dictates how many armies you can maintain and how many units are in those armies, which I think is a, a nice touch, it but is. it ultimately, you'd think that, you know, if you can hit a person's supply, you can destroy their army would be a nice mechanic. But the supply only gets recalculated when it's drawn from the Westeros phase, which means that you could very well try and knock out someone's supply, and then the next three phases are musterings or I nothing find happens. I the most them. aggressive phase is the influence phase. I remember trying to go for the influence, and you were just like, I'm gonna get this influence, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, well, you know, this is really well, important. One thing we didn't mention about the influence, when you, when you actually go to change um, the positions on them, everyone's is wiped clean, mm. and everyone has to bid by playing their yes. money, money, their influence yeah. power tokens, I believe they're called in the game, yeah. um, in, a, in a closed fist and reveal at the same time whoever yes. has the most gets the highest position. It's a mini game auction to determine it's, who gets yeah. these Which I actually boys. quite like, but it often, but you know, obviously yeah. you can throw all your money into something and then still lose, which kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like the opposition. Doesn't like the opposition. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, but I think that while everything in this game is very good, my biggest criticism is that it is just so long. Yeah, yeah. it did take a good It's ten three rounds. To four. Yeah. yeah, and it takes three to four hours. And I mean, the, okay, when you look at the other Christian T. Peterson game, which is Twilight Imperium yes. over here, now I think that you really can't mention this without looking at this. Twilight Imperium is a very thematic game, but it's not very well balanced. It's just a lot of nonsense and random stuff happening that you have to be a bit strategic and a bit reactive towards and he's tried to bring some of that over into this game of Thrones it's board got game. his fingerprints all exactly. over and I, I was think learning Twilight after this I was just like well it's basically like Game of Thrones it's a little bit in like space. Yeah. 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 I, it's just, it, I also feel like there's a lot of things yeah there's a lot of things in here that they've designed to make it seem really um, like there's a lot of deep things going on but a lot of it doesn't seem that necessary this supply track um, doesn't really add that much in my no, opinion. It's sort of like, oh, I forgot about, I can't do that. Oh, you know, yeah. that's oh it's, yeah. it's a mildly convenient. It's not yeah. to say it's a bad game. No, no, no. It's a good game. People who enjoy long strategy games are going to love this. Yes. People enjoy mm. the bluffing aspect even more yep. so, because every time you put down one of these uh, order tokens, no one knows what it is. You could be putting down your special marching orders that give you a plus one in all combat, yeah. Yeah. and then they won't know what's coming. They'll be, they'll be planning to support you, maybe. Or yeah. they might be trying to get some money that time. And yeah. if you, but, but keep in mind that if you've got a slow learner and you're starting this game, you might need to take a break yeah. in between. Yeah, so, yeah. so set aside a little bit of time to play this game if it's mm. your first time playing. Mm, indeed. Yeah. When it comes to other games that you think would do the same sort of mechanic but do it better, All right, um, any ideas? In my opinion, I would actually say that Komet does something a little bit more interesting. Komet has a similar thing whereby you play mm, house yeah. cards um, to buff armies, but uh, they're they're all balanced across every single player's one. And my my criticism was that these effects are different for each of the houses, which don't really. It's a case where theme is overtaking the mechanic. Here. Yeah, exactly. They are all based in, on each house. In command, it's balanced. And another is issue I have with this game is that it does take about the first two or three turns. Are you just? Oh, I'm going to move this guy here. Yeah. Mm. And uh, oh, you're going to move that guy there. Oh, okay, that's which doesn't help it's when the game's already slow to begin with. Yeah, yeah. So your first two or three rounds. I mean, there's. I think there's even rules out there to speed the game up to start the game at turn three and move some random units out. If you have to do that to make the game interesting, <laughs> Komet solves that by you can teleport around the map very early on, which is nice. I mean, there's there's simple things like that, which um, I, you know, it just makes the game a bit quicker and a bit easier. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, I, if I was going to spend a lot of time on a game, I would actually prefer to play Twilight Imperium, yes. to be honest, yeah. than play this yeah. game. So it's one of those things I feel like it's going to get a, gather a lot of dust on the shelf simply because I'll be playing Twilight two, Imperium. Two reasons. That said, it's a good game. People will enjoy it. If mm. you love Game of Thrones, you will certainly love it. If you're a Game of Thrones fan and love playing yeah, more strategy with three yeah. to six that's players, this is the way to go. Exactly. It's yeah. wonderful. But, which in a be our next review for Game of Thrones, the card game. I prefer oh, the card game. Yes. It's yep. faster, and you're going to see what happens when we review that. We hope you've enjoyed our review of Game of Thrones, the board game. Next time you see us, we'll be doing a review of its more streamlined sibling, Game of Thrones, the card game. See you then. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Boom. Boom.